Hello, my name is Zuravika. I am a second year student of veterinary medicine and I will be talking to you about my daily life as a veterinary student. Hi, I'm Driti. Uh, I'm from India and I study veterinary medicine in Sofia. Personally, ever since I was a kid, I've always been interested in medicine in general, uh, about the um, surgery or how to diagnose someone. It felt a bit like playing God. So, um, and as I grew up, I thought about getting into medicine, especially human medicine. But then as I was going through the end of my schooling, I saw a few videos about veterinary uh, medicine and I thought that was a bit more interesting. And so I decided to go for it. One of the things I didn't think about is uh, veterinary medicine is definitely a bit tougher than human medicine because you just have a greater variety of animals to study about. In human medicine, you just do about one species, one body. But in vet, you do about different, uh, different mammals. My daily routine during the week can vary depending on when my lessons start as uh, I could be waking up at 6 some mornings and 8 at others. Those 10 minutes of sleep always count. Uh, the earliest lessons um, are all lessons start at 8.15. It just depends where they are. If you have a lesson in building C, which is a bit outside of Sudansky Grad, you will have to wake up earlier to take a bus or two buses even, depending where you live, to be able to be at your lesson at 8.15 on time. You get your timetable at the start of the semester and from there it's different every year and it's different for each of the groups. You could have lessons every day, like you could have lessons four times a week, depending on how your practices and lectures are structured uh, throughout the week. Uh, the lessons all start at 8.15, no lessons start earlier. You might have an easier morning starting later because you have no lessons in the morning. And there are some classes which could finish around 6, but usually around 4 you are done with your day. Uh, it does happen um, because they do structure the timetables in a way that you have time to get to each lesson. So it does happen that you might have one hour breaks. Usually it's not worth going all the way home for just one hour and then having to come back. So you usually stay together with your group, either go get some coffee or make your way and stay in the building. In, the build in all the buildings there are different places where you can just chill. The, most of the veterinary students are from Greece, uh, but we still do have an international mix. And also in the other courses there are students coming from all over. Uh, everyone is very supportive and understanding of each other. You never feel any competition, especially because we're a small group. We're only 30 students is the maximum for the English course. Weekends, no lessons during the weekends. Weekends are completely free to you and you can study, you can go out, enjoy your time. Usually there's not much to do in the morning other than get up, get ready, get as much sleep as you can, and go straight off to class. On weekends, it's, yeah, I usually sleep in and uh, stay home. Or if there are plans, go out with friends. After classes, usually stay home, um, watch, maybe put on some Netflix, make some dinner. And yeah, or if there are plans, go out with a few friends during the weekend. Especially in the center, there are Tons of cafes, tons of restaurants. There's a lot to eat, a lot to see. You can easily spend the whole day in the city center looking at things, trying new things. There are places to go out of so Sofia. Uh, I think skiing is very um, popular in Bansko, a nearby city. Or there are beaches in other cities as well. Um, the, you can go to gyms here. Um, there are some that are quite cheap, maybe pay around 30 left per month or you have even discounts for students as well. Living in Sudansky is definitely closer to the campus so you don't have to get up late. It's not really a hassle to go to classes every morning. And um, But if you're looking for more friends, more um, things to do, 
then a living in and if you're okay with paying a little bit higher for rent then um, the center is good Uh, we have uh, practices and lectures. Lectures are always in a lecture hall big enough to fit usually the 30 students that are in the course. Whilst practices are in smaller rooms, uh, it depends from subject to subject. For example, if it's chem chemistry or biochemistry, you will be in a lab. If it's anatomy also, you will be in a lab. But usually, for example, subjects like uh, nutrition or biostatistics, you will be in a normal classroom with enough seats for everyone. The groups of uh, practicals are very much smaller than lectures, so um, we usually do experiments for uh, practicals. And so first, usually the first few, maybe the first hour is done in explaining the experiment, how to do it, and the second in us actually doing the experiment. Maybe one week one student does one experiment and maybe the next another does it but usually maybe two or three students do the experiment and we observe maybe for maybe for subjects like microbiology every student gets to do a slide because those are easy but may, for physiology because there's a limited amount of blood or something um, we make like two or three of those For every subject, uh, there is a different exam prep. For example, your anatomy uh, exam preparation will be very different to your physiology exam preparation as it does help in anatomy to continue going to the lab, visiting by yourself and with your group and seeing the animals and labeling them. Uh, but for physiology, it also is also very useful to use uh, the lectures and keep notes, go over all the notes from your lectures and practices and just constantly keep revising. Uh, personally, I prefer writing down and repeating it to myself constantly so I remember. I recommend for pra more practical subjects like anatomy, videos are the best. They, and um, in person is the best for anatomy, for sure. Going to the lab regularly, consistency is key for anatomy. There's no other way around it. For exams, during the practicals, um, it's usually done in groups, maybe groups of five or ten. They go into a room, do their practical um, and come out. After all the groups are done, uh, the professor lets them know who passed and who didn't. After that, you have to go through a theory. Theory is done with everyone who passed the first practical. Along the semester, we have about every two to three weeks, we have small tests that we have on the subject matter that we have done, like we had done till then. Uh, these are called colloquiums and uh, you need to pass them in order to have, like, in order to have you answer the final exam. The hardest uh, subject as a second year would definitely be um, anatomy. Uh, there is just so much to study within anatomy. You need to know every muscle, nerve, vessel, within the body and it just becomes too much for you at times to do all of that in one sitting, in one exam. It's uh, very unlikely for me to study after a, a day of lessons um, unless there's an exam or a colloquium the next day, but usually studying personally is done over the weekend, sometimes in cafes is also nice to go study in. Uh, the two most common learning ways that I've seen here is either by yourself at home uh, or you call a few friends over and have um, a study session by yourself or you have a group study within cafes. There are, there are lots of them here that have a lot of students studying in them. Um, I think just um, take it one day at a time. Don't think about exams constantly, don't think about everything academic that you need to do and definitely take breaks, go out with friends, don't worry about you know feeling guilty about not studying because it's quite hard to skip days especially when you're in medical course to not study. One of the main things uh, I think for any subject is to go through what you do each day and not just leave it for the end like right before the exams and uh, so every time you learn something just go over it, you don't have to memorize it. You just have to at least understand what you did. Definitely learn how to cook. 
it's a great skill to have and it's a it's great going to be great for your future as well so if you go to you uh, if you go to university and you have a long day definitely taking food from home helps a lot um, definitely is recommended to bring your own spices your own whatever you prefer from home your own snacks it really helps with especially with homesickness it really helps with that luckily so far i've not felt homesick i think one of the best ways to um, not go through that is to surround yourself with people you trust people you're comfortable with and uh, definitely have your safe space within your home uh, an important thing about moving here is uh, to be able to get a sim as soon as you can if you don't have a european sim and you have a foreign sim um, get a bulgarian one as soon as you can it helps with um, using data and calling um another thing is attending all your lectures it might sound tempting to miss all your classes just because attendance is necessary but in terms of learning you really need to attend those classes if you can it's very helpful to make um, upper class friends uh, seniors have a lot of more lot more experience than you they have a lot more information than you it's always helpful to ask them questions they also have information on exams previous uh, past exam papers how everything how the future is going to be how the next few years are going to be so yeah having um, upper classmen friends is definitely a plus one of my tips which has really changed is i was someone who in the morning would always be sleeping till the last minute rushing not having breakfast getting to lesson and being destroyed uh it has really helped me to wake up just those 10 minutes earlier to have a breakfast so i'm not starving during the lesson constantly distracted and falling asleep if the day is very long uh i try to have my um lunch prepared something that i can eat in between lessons instead of always going to buy especially because it also saves a lot of money uh when you're on student budgets but uh there are always little mini markets and tea market is amazing that always prepare your little meals and they don't even cost that much and you can just grab them and go and eat another tip is that a lot of you will find yourself in a new environment a new country so it's very important to step out of your comfort zone and do things that you wouldn't have done in other places because they do make you even though you might not be good at them maybe you start doing a new sport it's always just a different distraction from uni don't let your life just become uni lessons uni lessons have something once in a while to change things up that's very important time management was definitely a struggle for me at first especially in first year because of covid and not being in presence but now that we finally are in presence with experience and getting used to my timetable i've been more capable of managing my time around the subjects and the things that i know i have i hope you found this information useful uh, i hope to see you soon thank you very much i hope you find this video useful and that it answered some of your questions